Hello. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Jackie Ina. Jackie, 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 Jackie. Jigga, 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 jigga. The title is definitely a little clickbaitish, but that's because every gay makeup tutorials don't get views. Makeup tutorials in general don't really get views, but it's okay. I still enjoy doing them. So I'm gonna be showing you guys a video that I would consider an everyday makeup tutorial. You know, like if I were to actually wear makeup every day, what it would look like. It's gonna include a little bit of skin prep before we do get started because I'm trying to work on my long intros. Y'all be saying I'll talk too much. Fine, fine. I just wanna really quickly say thank you to Farsali for one, not only sponsoring today's video, but also giving me the chance to try the new up and coming product. Like I love when I get to try the products months in advance, it makes me feel really exclusive. And then I get to actually like form my opinion about the product. So the products that I'm gonna be featuring are actually two of their newest launches, Rose Gold Skin Mist, which um, <clears throat> I've clearly gotten a lot of use out of. It's cool though, I got a brand new prettier backup bottle. And the new Haldi Eyes Brightening Turmeric Eye Cream. So I've actually been using both of these for a while now. We're just gonna be working those into the makeup today. Have no fear, you guys. I've been looking out for you. This is the makeup tutorial you can wear with every single outfit. You can wear this during the day. You can wear this at night. It really doesn't matter, sis. But first, please hydrate your skin, especially if it's during the day. I better be seeing you wear SPF. This is the Olay Regenerist Whip. This one has SPF, SPF 25. I'm actually gonna do a post on a couple of the SPFs that I like using. I like this one because it pretty much goes on really clear and it's the only drugstore SPF at the moment that I actually like. Look at that, you can't see me. So of course, I never skip eye cream. Girl, you drag up! This is their Brightening Turmeric Eye Cream. And what I love about Farsali is there's always a little bit of like cultural references in either the ingredients of the products or like the story of the product. Turmeric is really popular in a lot of Indian cultures. They use it for like rituals and ceremonies and weddings. Being that that's one of like their key ingredients or like their <laughs> all-star ingredients. Turmeric is actually used, I've heard it being used to brighten the skin, to fade like dark marks in the skin. But in the eye cream, it is there as an anti-inflammatory. It also has caffeine in it. I'm gonna lift the cap open so you can see, girl. She pretty, girl. Do you know how long it takes to finish an eye cream? I cannot believe I'm almost done with this. Real quick, show you what it looks like on my skin. It actually adds this really pretty like glow to the skin. And this is a three in one. You can use this as obviously an eye cream. You can also use it as a base or like primer for concealer. And you can also mix it in your concealer to make it look a little bit more glowy. Last week, I did do a mini review on this on Insta Stories. I do really like the eye cream. I'm not particularly wild about the size of the packaging. Like I wish the mouth was a little bit smaller because it's like a lot of eye cream. I don't think the package needed to be this big, but I still really like the product clearly because I've damn near used all of it. A little bit goes a long way. So I'm just gonna pat a bit of that on the back of my ring finger and I'm gonna boop, 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 boop. And then one of my brow bones. Whenever you're applying eye cream, you always wanna head all the way into the orbital bone. So just blend that out and you'll see that because it's got that yellow tint to it, it's gonna instantly add a little glow. Look at my skin, look at my skin, look at my skin. Mm -hmm. Get into it, don't touch, just look. I think we all, let's be real, I think we all can agree the perfect makeup look starts with good skin prep. Now I gotta tie my hair back and I do all my own stunts. And in order for me to do them, I gotta tie my hair back. Then I'm gonna jump into the Milk Blur Primer. This primer's good because it don't feel like drying out my skin every day. It's like hydrating and balancing at the same time. And I like to press it into my skin, just slap myself around a little bit. I'll tell you something, when I walk into the boardroom, if the first thing you don't notice is my skin, I'm not signing no contracts no deals, meeting adjourned. I'm gonna color correct the bottom half of my very uneven face, AKA my fake beard, with the tinted hue stick. The shade that I use is Rise. And I rise up, I'm not afraid, I rise up. From shaving my face, I rise up. <laughs> For real though, this little color correcting stick really changed my life. I mean, you can either do this or just wear two foundations, it's up to you. When you prep your skin really well, everything just glides on, just so buttery. And when you're in a hurry, that's important. All right, look, look, I do realize this is very awkward to look at, but it's all a part of the process, okay? Step, step back, step back. I'm gonna take my Minted Cosmetics Foundation Stick. This is a good everyday foundation, I'll tell you why. It's not matte, it is what I would like to call satin maybe? I think satin's a good word, it's just, Good. I can get things done with this foundation. But one little tip, if you, if you have dry skin, you can always like mist your brush first, give it a little pop, 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 or you can just give it a quick shake and spray down your face first. 
Just a little bit though. Don't, don't, don't get too close. I can easily blend out the foundation a little bit better, makes the stick a little bit more movable. So as I blend out my foundation, I'm gonna talk about the Rose Gold Skin Mist. Oh, I forgot to throw on my uh, Skin Tune Blur. I don't always do this with my foundation. I do it every once in a while when I need a little more long wearability out of my makeup. So the Rose Gold Skin Mist has rose hip oil. It's also alcohol free and it has real, real pawn shoppable 24 karat gold flex in it. I actually really love that and it smells so good. Very tropical, very fruity. I wear this on clean skin. I wear this as a skincare. I wear this with makeup. It is definitely a, I have more than one use type of product. Girl, this skin, your coworkers could never. Mm, I'm not talking to you today, Jennifer from HR. In fact, I'm going to your boss and reporting you. Mm. I love how I can just grab the stick and just put it right where I want it because it's a stick. You can use this after makeup to kind of like, to take the super powdery look away. Okay, so next we gonna conceal. I'm gonna take my Born This Way Multi Sculpted Concealer and mix it in. Where's my eye cream? Where's my eye cream? I'm gonna go back to the eye cream again. We love mixing skincare with our complexion products, girl. I'm gonna take a little bit of that eye cream on a brush and then my Multi Sculpted Concealer on the back of my hand. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I have been applying my concealers with a brush because I feel like it allows me to control it a bit more and mix the two together. This is an hourglass brush, by the way. And starting in that inner corner, I'm gonna start working my way in. Also, I've kind of switched up the way I apply concealer. I don't I don't bring it all the way down the corner of my nose anymore. I kind of keep it around the immediate under eye area. I feel like when I apply it this way, it adds a little bit of width to my face because I have a really narrow face. And Born This Way is pretty watery, so when mixed with the Haldi ice cream, I actually kind of thickened it up a little bit. The shade that I use, by the way, is Chestnut. And then Sable to contour. They actually brought this in ganache now and it's very rare that a company has concealer that's too dark for me to contour with, but ganache is like just a tad too dark for even me to contour. Now, you know we like to let the concealers dry down a little bit, honey. So I might take a little fan. I might go pick up my outfit. I'm very much so a multitasker when I'm trying to get ready. Like when I got some place to be, it means put on a brow. Pick out your shoes, apply your shadow, put your drawers on, make sure they're not inside out. It happens, it, hey, it happens. Don't lie and say it's never happened to you. Letting your concealer dry down a little bit increases the coverage. It does, it really does work, you guys. Please let your concealer dry down a little bit. That is, of course, assuming you're not using a super, 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 super mattifying concealer, but obviously Born This Way isn't, that's why I'm doing this. And then working my way around the outer corners of where I apply the concealer, I'm gonna start blending it. One more thing I've been doing lately with concealer is I have like under eye bags, not in color, but just like I have a deep like line, a, a dip, like the under eye dip I call it. Instead of blending, 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 blending all the way up to the, like I barely tap over my immediate under eye area. Barely tap over it because I want the most amount of coverage there. I don't want no troubles. I don't want no issues. I don't want no loss, nothing. Basically what I'm trying to say is around the outskirts, of where we apply the concealer. That is where I use the heaviest blending hand. Like I kind of just work around there. And then as soon as I work my way up to my immediate under eye area, which is my problem area, I barely tap it a few times, barely. Like I just pretty much leave it. I leave it because I don't want that product to get picked up on the sponge. And you guys, you can do the same technique with any product, with any product. I don't care if you use products from ColourPop, I don't care if you use products from NARS, Too Faced, Urban Decay, whatever, it really doesn't matter. Using the extra concealer I have, I'm gonna highlight my five head cone zone. I call this the cone zone. This is the hazard area. I'm throwing in some good tips, you guys, for girls that have narrow faces and wanna plump their face up a little bit more. You see this little dot I'm drawing down here? We're gonna keep this really wide. And then do you see I'm highlighting my forehead and I'm drawing like pretty much like a sunset. Also, this brush is fabulous for the nose. I'm just saying you can get really precise application down here. You see that? You can't see that. You need to clean your phone screen. Now we're gonna blend both our contour. How can I explain this? I kind of like blend my contour up to my concealer so that it just looks like a more natural transition from your highlight shade to your contour shade. It's so gloomy outside. California don't know whether the hell it wants to be summer, spring, winter, fell. Okay, I'm gonna stop with the Game of Thrones references. No one cares anymore. Okay, sisterhood of the five head pants. We need to talk about how to get this done the right way. See how I got my contour up here? I'm gonna take my brush and go from blending my contour right into blending my concealer. Like there's no, there's no space in between. We're blending them both at the same time. Your contour is not gonna look streaky, unnatural. It's not gonna look super, super obvious. Like you wanna blend both of them
them at the same time. Don't go all the way down into the middle of the cone zone. Just stay around the edges and blend. Just stay around the edges. Trust me when I say this, it will really make your contour and your highlight look way seamless. Do you see how I'm basically blending my contour all the way up to my cheekbone? That's how it's gotta be sometimes. Then I'll go back to my, then I'll go back to my sponge and blend this in the middle. I'll just kind of go over the whole face. I prefer brushes for foundation, but sometimes it does leave a little streaky streaks. I'm not gonna lie. So you just gotta kind of finish it. Finish him! With the beauty blender or whatever sponge you like, whatever sponge you like. That's one thing I will say about beauty blender. They have definitely learned how to effectively market the hell. Like they put sponges on the map. You can't tell me beauty blenders didn't put sponges on the map. Foundations! It's a different story. The sponge has become the chapstick of all sponges. Like you don't even call lip balm, it's not lip balm, it's chapstick. If you take away anything from this video, just know that I'm a big fan of brushes and then going over it with sponge again. Brushes and then sponge again. Brushes and then sponge again. This all sounds like a very strenuous process, but it takes on a good day, like for real, for real, I'm not just saying this. It may be a slight exaggeration, but on a good day, like if I'm really in a hurry, I can do this in 30 minutes but it's gonna look good because it's better to arrive late looking cute than to be there on time not looking cute, William Shakespeare. Also, one little trick I'm gonna show you guys to help hide your dips if you have dips like I do. I'm gonna take a really, 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 now this is under no circumstances an attempt at being light-skinned for all y'all in the comments that'll try me. Some people really like to try me, they really do. This is caramel, it's really light. This would never, <sighs> would never be a highlight for me. It's super light. You only need the tiniest, the tiniest bit. That is gonna kind of give like this force shield so that you're distracted from the dip because it's so light. Girl, sometimes I'll even go full Caucasian. I wanna say this is this is caramel from Radiant Creamy. This is ginger from Radiant Creamy. I'm personally not a big fan of overly highlighted skin and I would like to think my highlight is socially acceptable for the most part. I know that look is really popular depending on where you live. I don't think it's a bad look. It's just not for me. Because the concealer's still wet, like you're actually mixing the two in. And I'm gonna concentrate that color right over the dips. Before we set this magic marble head with powder, I'm actually gonna bronze. I'm gonna bronze while my complexion is still wet. This is Coco Naughty. Coco Naughty, blah, 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 from Fenty. I wish it was a little darker, but I do really like this color. You can, for only the price of $10.99, bronze your skin on your wet, dewy face. This is probably very triggering, but don't worry, we're gonna set it with powder. I'm getting there. Boom, we're done. No, we're not, not even close. I'm gonna go to my Laura Mercier powder. You can use whatever powder your little heart desires. I start around my mouth, because this is the part of my face that tends to move first. And I just apply a little bit of that powder, even though this powder is very expensive, a little bit goes a long way. Please do not, my friend, I beg, please don't put on a bunch of powder on top of a liquid foundation. Please don't do that. It's gonna look super cakey, super obvious. You just don't want that kind of problem in your life. You really don't. Now using the little tip, I'm gonna go around my nose because that's where I tend to get the most oily. And like, we're just focusing this in the areas where makeup tends to break down the quickest for me. This is so many products, you guys. I'm so sorry but I'm just showing you the technique. You do not have to use what I use. I just can't stress that enough. I promise you, you don't. NYX has great complexion products. ColourPop has great complexion products. If you're looking for something a little bit more pocket friendly, check them out. Now I'm gonna go to my actual highlighting powder. This is Fenty Cashew. Using a brush, I'm just gonna go right in on my under eye. Uh-uh, 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 Just patting it in right in my under eye area. All this hard work we put in our under eye concealer. We don't wanna move it, girl. Don't, we don't want it to budge. And I also do a little bit of highlighting on my chin. See how there's just a nice little gradient of color there from like highlight to my skin tone. Then I'm gonna actually bake. I do like a little soft set with the brush and then I actually bake. Very little powder. Look how much powder I'm using, that's not that much. Try me, try me. Cause I can get real down and dirty with powder if I want to. I'm a changed woman, I let go of my wicked ways. So I take a little bit of that powder and just start to really follow the same areas where we apply the concealer. Padding, no sweeping, no sweeping. Bat, 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 bat. What I used to do is bring the powder like around the sides of my nose. I don't do that anymore because I just don't feel like it to be honest. I'm not gonna lie, I'm just, I don't feel like it. I don't feel like it, I don't feel like doing it. And I'm absolutely not pressing the powder into my skin. I don't want it to be like ingrained into my DNA, you know, like I just put enough just to keep the concealer underneath it in place. 
you know. What I used to do is like really go in with the concealer and my under eye would look so good and then I would put powder on and I feel like I would mess up what I did with the concealer and it was really annoying. So I've just learned to be a lot more light handed with powder. Then I'm gonna follow my nose bridge. This is the Sigma P82. She be, she be getting oily too, girl. Shoot. Yes, I'm doing this while I'm baking. I'm gonna take my blush. This is in the shade number four Cardinal. This is from Marina Volte. They have the most beautiful freaking gorgeous blushes. And it's a really pretty berry matte. And I'm gonna put this on my cheeks. To me, this is a good way to keep the blush and highlighter in check. They're always trying to steal the shine. For my everyday look, I always go peach on my cheeks or like bubblegum pink, or I'll mix them together. I'm gonna add a little bit more bronzer, but this time I went darker because I like a lot of color gradients. If you can't already tell, I like to do a lot of like color stacking. Like instead of just using one color, I'll go in with something a little darker and define it a little bit more. This is Mocha Mommy also. Why did I say Mocha Mommy? Like goo goo ga ga. Mocha Mommy from Fenty. This is definitely Definitely like really dark for me, but when used on something else, it just looks a little less like strong. But I also will be using this again a little bit later and I'll show you what I'm doing with it in a second. So look, see, I got a little bit more bronze definition without it being, you know, too shocking and jarring. I'm gonna fill my brows and I'm gonna kind of move through this because <laughs> no one cares. And now my brows are done. <laughs> I really feel like I've mastered really mastered my brows. My brows could not be better. Like, I just love the way that I do them now. And I'm glad we've both gotten here together because once I got them microbladed, like I was already adapting this shape. Now, if you're doing a really minimal eyeshadow look, cause obviously this is kind of like an everyday look, so you're not gonna go in. Well, some of y'all be going in, but I ain't got time for all that. This next step is really important cause it's gonna really elevate your makeup game and make it look like you put in a lot more effort than you actually did. What I do is I take my bronzer. This is usually the lighter one. You don't wanna go too dark or too heavy on this step cause it'll look <clears throat> eclectic. And we're just gonna apply it like in the innermost part of the eye. I call this my fake nose contour. You're not really contouring your nose. You're just kind of like starting at the head of the brow all the way down to the corner of the eye. And that just gives this really like, I have my life put together. I've got my life put together type of look. Uh-uh, I'm not driving in the carpool lane by myself. No, absolutely not, sir. Your brow is gonna come off. A little bit of your brow is gonna come off. That's okay, that ain't no problem. As you can see, by the way that I'm moving around all over the place with this makeup tutorial, I do like to use products that have multiple uses. I'll use concealer on my eyes. I'll use eye cream with my concealer. I'll use skincare with my makeup, whatever. On days like this when I need to get the hell out the house, I'm using bronzer as an eyeshadow. And Mocha Mommy specifically is the perfect, like it's got the perfect amount of red, it's really warm, it's very deep, and it looks really pretty, really pretty in the crease. So I'm gonna pop that onto my crease. Using two bronzers has really elevated my makeup game, not only because I can use them on my eyes, but it just looks so much more, just looks so much more elevated, you know? Everyday makeup for me is also still pretty glam. This is normal for me, but for someone who doesn't do this many steps, this could be like an upgrade for them. And I wanna be able to show you guys, at least have the option so that you know how to do it. You know what I mean? Look at how good this looks as a shadow. I get very excited for transition colors. Transition colors, like nothing makes me happier. Nothing makes me happier, nothing makes me happier than a transition color that just cooperate. Just keep blowing this out and blowing this out. You don't even have to keep adding more product, just keep blending it out. Like it doesn't look like you hit that snooze button 10 times that morning. You know you did, but like people don't need to know that. Also notice how as I continue to do the makeup, my bake just looks less and less obvious because I don't use a ton of baking powder anymore. Blend this into your brow, by the way. Like go right, you see how I'm like right underneath my brow? I'm all up in her business. Go right in there and get her, Jade. I do like to set my brows, I do. This is the ABH Dip Brow Gel in the color medium brown. Um, Sometimes going a little blonde, especially if you have dark skin and maybe you dyed your hair blonde or you're wearing like a blonde wig. Lighten up the brow a little bit with like tinted brow gel, like in a taupey or blonde color. Oh, it just really looks like you knew what you're doing. Like I'm all about the finessery girl. I'm all about the finessery. <sighs> This next part of the tutorial is honestly a game changer. I don't even have a word to describe this color combo, but this has become my tried and true favorite, 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 favorite way to do my eyes when I'm getting out the house, okay? Get ready. It's simple, but it's so bomb. Like I did this and I was like, Yo, who the hell do you think you are? It's good at night, it's good during the day, it's good for party, orty, orties. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a bronze shadow, preferably, preferably this part is important. Listen up ladies, 
focus here. I do prefer it to be either cream or liquid. So I'm gonna take these Stila, these liquid eyeshadows. The color that I'm gonna use is Twig. This also has a little bit of red and it's like a shimmery reddish brown. I'm gonna take this and apply it all over my lid. It's that, like look at how good it looks. And next to Mocha Mommy, what? Like it looks so good, but you're not done yet. Before it dries down, you gotta go back to your bronzer and start blending around it because we don't want any harsh lines in that shadow. We don't want it to look too harsh. We don't want it to look too, you know, unblended. This to me is what really makes that shadow look really effortless. This is pretty, but it's only gonna get better. Just, just watch, just watch. I'm gonna take a really random color. This is Wonderlust. And this one is kind of like your fairy unicorn color. Color. It's really random. Don't ask me how I discovered this color combo because I could not tell you. I have no clue. I like to layer and mix and match colors. So basically what I did was I popped this on top and do this if you don't mind your wand like mixing in with the color or whatever. If you do, then you might want to use a brush. You just pop that on top. Look at how freaking pretty this is. Like, is it just, am I just dramatic? Because I just feel like when I did this, I was just like, Oh my God, that's so pretty. I didn't really think much of it until I kept like taking Insta stories videos all throughout the day. And I was like, it looks like I spent like a really long time doing my eyes. I just used these two random liquid shadow colors. And then again, you're gonna go back in with your bronzer and just make sure that the edges are not, you know, too uh, harsh, just blend out around it. And also I like to go just outside of where my eye socket is because it makes your eyes look bigger and brighter. I don't know if you can kind of see this eye. I went just outside of my eye socket, whereas this one, the twig is right within my eye socket. Ooh, child, it's time for a new one. That's how much I know I love these. So I'm gonna take a brown eye pencil. You can use any dark brown. I'm gonna line my top lash line. You guys know I love pencil liner up here. I just want everyone to love brown liner the way I do. And then also hit that water line. Now, if I need to get the hell out of the house and I ain't got time, I'll usually skip this step or I might, I may even leave the bottom lash line alone altogether. My favorite part of this look, second favorite part of this look is sweeping my bronzer along my bottom lash line. Like when I actually have the time to do this. Obsessed with how this ties the eyes all together. Now for lashes, you already know what time it is. So extra Miami from Lily Lash. This has become my everyday lash. If you have trouble applying lash glue, you can just put it on the back of your hand or on like a mixing palette. And then I'll use the back of my applicator and dip it right into the glue and then I'll apply it. There's nothing more annoying than squirt, squirt all over the damn lash. Lashes ruined. While that lash glue dries, you know, I like to multitask. Every brown girl, period, period. period. Needs to get into chocolate geo from Becca. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. This is just like the most beautiful, deep golden chocolate. It's definitely darker than Topaz. If you like Topaz, love Topaz. You're gonna really like chocolate geo. And as you can see, there's a lot of gold in this tutorial because just gold is personally my everyday mood. So I'm gonna highlight, look at how pretty it is. Like it doesn't really sit on the skin. It matches my complexion. And of course my inner color highlight. Let me just say, if you don't even have time to do all of this, you can just take your highlighter and go right in the inner corner, a little bit on your lid. Guess what time it is. Not time for you to be honking in my neighborhood. That's for sure. It's last time, it's last time. Period. She's long and she's also spiky. So it doesn't take away from the eye look. There we go. There, there she is. There she is. I'm not gonna apply mascara just yet because we wanna do the finishing spray and all that good stuff. And you know, girl, that's how it ends up running. Let me see if you can run it, run it. We're not doing that with mascara, all right? We're just not. Using a little small detailed powder brush, instead of like dusting off the base, I'm gonna pat it into place. And if you don't load on the powder, then this step will be done right. Like you shouldn't have to sweep it off. You should be able to relatively leave on whatever's there. I'm just trying to give you guys the real tea of what I do to get this stuff to last and to look good. It wouldn't be a Jackie Ina tutorial if I lied or withheld information or didn't tell you like it's, it's a lot. You need stuff, like you need a lot of stuff. You can use any lightweight finishing powder that you like. This is the Airbrush Flawless Finish Skin Perfecting Micro Powder. I just kind of use this as like a last final step under my eye and I'll take that detail. This is the Morphe M501 again. And I'll just kind of go over where my dips are. This is really kind of where I concentrate it. And that locks everything into place again. We're just about done, you guys. Going back to my rose gold skin mist, I'm gonna set everything in place. We're done, we're done. <laughs> 
we're not, we still gotta do our lips, calm down. Make sure you don't get too close, cause before, when it was just our bare face, you can do this however you want, girl. You got plenty of room for error. Now that the makeup is on, tread lightly. And then spray. If I don't do this next step, what I just did would be completely pointless. Take your beauty blender, push that mist into your skin. That will really, really activate it. When you just spray it over the face, it just doesn't, mm -mm. it just sits there, you know? Now you can do your mascara. It's totally safe. You don't have to worry about it being runny and all over your cheeks. For my bottom lash line, I don't go in with mascara the way I used to. I just really try to dot it at the root. I'm not going down my wig today. It is not that kind of office party. So for lips, you guys know I always go in with brown liner. This is K from ColourPop. This is just what I wear for my everyday nudes cause it's every day, so it's gonna be a nude. I don't make the rules, okay? It's it's literally in the Library of Congress. I go right over my cupid's bow with one, li one line. I don't follow the curvature of my lip. And I already have big lips, so I do think that overlining can get over <laughs> played honey so i do just enough to where like it looks like i was trying to overline but it didn't look like i was trying to make my lips bigger because i obviously already have big lips does that make sense i'm actually going to show you the difference of what it looks like when i fill in my normal lip line versus when i overline this is my overline side this is my normal lip line overline lip line do you see a difference So it looks a little extreme, but once we put on the lip color, watch. And make sure your pencil's fully sharpened when you do this too, or else it's not gonna look cute. This is Minted Peach Please, my favorite, favorite peachy nude lipstick. You don't even need a liner, but I like that look. Then I'm gonna take a pink lipstick. It has to be a pink lipstick that's like really, really light. This is Wifey from Keisha Kaor. I mean, I like Wifey, but it's one of those like white based pinks. Like it's really light for my skin tone. I have to wear this color with something else. So I'm just gonna pop this kind of in the center. You see this, you see it. Makeup by Denise just collabed with Bobbi Brown and created this gloss. Oh, actually her and Tenny collab with Bobbi Brown. And West Coast Bay is Tenny's color and then East Coast Slay is Denise's color. So Denise's color is a really light coffee peachy nude for everyday lip looks. I'll either wear a peachy nude gloss or something pink. And if I need to, I'll just go around with my finger and detail it, but that's it for real this time. What in the Blink 182 is going on outside my damn apartment? And the last step, but I would honestly say the most important step is the mole. The mole, 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 mole. We're just filling in what's already there, people. Nothing here to see, move along. And, and that is the final look. Like, I don't think you understand, Oh. I am not to be messed with with this look. Actually, I'm pretty sure the camera's not doing it justice, even though I look good in 4K. Just saying. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I knew this was gonna be a long one, but listen, the girls always have something to say when my videos are not like 20 minutes minimum. So honestly, if you don't like long video, this is not the channel for you. I'm very thorough, I'm very detailed, and I like to explain everything. Hopefully you found this helpful. You have fun hanging out with me today. Shout out again to Farsali for sponsoring yet another video. And also thank you guys for supporting my sponsored content. It really does mean a lot. Hopefully I'll see you guys in another video, which I'm gonna conveniently put right here you know the deal sit your butt down girl you know you want to watch one more video you know you do